And and we're going to get into J.J. Reddick because J.J. Reddick had a lot to say, some of which he shouldn't have said, Monsi. Mm. But I just have one okay. more order of business before we dive into this. So we have a Stanley Cup champion in the Florida Panthers. Yes. We have an NBA champion in the Boston Celtics. Yes. The College World Series is now over as Tennessee brought home the title last night. Yes. And we are officially in the summer as we have uh, made it past the summer solstice, correct? Right. Iowa Sam, is this good to call it summer now? Are we good, the gatekeeper of when summer actually is? Approved. Are we We are in summer. Welcome in. It is the Doug Gottlieb Show. She's Monty. I'm Dan Beyer. And we are talking about what everyone is talking about. And that is the F-bomb heard around the world yesterday from Lakers head coach J.J. Redick in his introductory press conference as the Lakers head coach. If you missed it, we got good news for you. Here it is. I've certainly heard everything. It's been a really interesting uh, six weeks or so just in terms of, uh, you know, being part of the engagement farming uh, industry. You know, it's been really interesting. However, I I, I don't really have a great answer for your question because I I really don't give a like, honestly. Mm, All right, and then the Lakers under J.J. Reddick start out (laughs) 0-1. You do not drop an F-bomb and think that you've won anything when you are being introduced as a head coach to one of the most storied franchises in the NBA, the biggest brand in the NBA, the 29th head coach of that franchise. You are not gaining anything by dropping an F-bomb. J.J. Redick and the Lakers are 0-1 in his tenure as head coach. Are you yelling, get off my lawn? It, that's what it sounds time like Time right and now. place, Monty. It's, time and place for everything. Okay, I just don't understand like how we are so fixated on that. In reality... There was other things that he said that we should be discussing, yet people want to talk about this F-bomb. And I, he was talking about himself in the moment, and I know he said it again, but in that moment when he's asked, he was asked, what misconceptions are you going to, you know, try to disprove? And he was like over it. He's like, because he's heard it all right now. It has been an interesting six weeks. I don't know what it's like to be J.J. Reddick being told, I'm your number one choice. Wait, I'm 1B actually, and uh, you're only coming back to me because 1A turned you down. And yes, I have no prior head coaching experience, which everyone and their mom is talking about. He was talking in the moment about himself, and I just felt that it wasn't fake. And I think that a lot of people have a problem with this because they have a problem with J.J. Reddick himself. Prior to this, how did you feel about J.J. Reddick? How did I feel about J.J. Yeah. Reddick? Prior to this press conference. I thought he was a heck of a player. I thought that the hire was made by LeBron James. Of course. And I thought that there were other qualified candidates uh, that should have gotten the job. I said yesterday that they're trying to surround him with a veteran staff. Right. And so I'm like, well, then why not hire a veteran if that's what you were looking for? That's how I feel about J.J. Reddick. I I. I felt Sam Cassell maybe would have been a better hire. Well, maybe he didn't example. want the job. Maybe. You know, may, the other options that everybody was talking about, I was like, maybe they just didn't want the job. But I still don't think you answered the question. What What did you feel about J.J. Redick as a person prior to all of this? I feel like a lot of people don't like him. A lot of people find him arrogant and cocky, which I, yes. I think he is. But I also don't think he's a fake guy. I think he's calculated, but... He's he is who he is and stoic at times. And I feel that one of the reasons that the Lakers liked J.J. Redick or maybe they just are pretending that they like him is that he is going to relate to the younger crowd. And this whole thing about cursing the time and place, I feel like we're in a different time. I mean, you know, you interviewed me. I may have thrown in a bit of a curse word when you interviewed me. Well, not the same one. Obviously, well, this, time and place. This time is actually, and place. This is actually this is true. I did interview Monty and did bring Monty <laughs> Hired her to Fox Sports Radio, but you didn't drop an F bomb. No, I wasn't an F bomb. When I asked what you know, you felt that you could bring to Fox Sports Radio. I no. I said, Monty, would you like to be a part of our team? And then you did have a swear <laughs> word after that. <laughs> but that that is different. That's that, that that's different. If he's having the private conversation with Rob Palinka, I get that he is who he is, but he is now the Lakers head coach, and you are not the same person. The day before, you are now the Lakers head coach. Time and place with everything. He has his own podcast where he and LeBron could have traded F-bombs for for 50 minutes. It just does not translate well. I'll give you an example. Travis Kelsey. You love Travis Kelsey, right? The story of the week. The story of the week for him being on stage with his girlfriend, Taylor Swift. This is Travis Kelsey 
talking about the haters with the Bussin' with the Boys podcast from Barstool. This is what Travis Kelsey had to say about the haters. I know what's real when I walk into the building. I know where my intentions are, and I know who I am as like a person, right? So it's like, yeah, I get it. I'm not having the success, or it's, you know, people are taking, having some hot takes on me and on what I got going on on the field and off. But for the most part, man, I just, I really don't give a I just have the, I don't give a damn syndrome. And I just That's keep it moving, man. It Dude, is. It, is that it's, something? it's lovely. I sleep wonderful at night. Yeah. You know, I'm just, I'll have a few beers if, if things are getting, you know, too go. fun or too bad. And it'll just be, you know, on to the level. next one, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Travis Kelsey is legit hated by Correct. almost everybody. Correct. JJ Reddick, I don't think that's the situation. I don't think I just think he gives people like a vibe that he's a that he thinks he's smarter than you. That's the vibe that I think people get from JJ Reddick. That that's why I don't like him. You know? Did that sound out of place? Travis Kelsey saying that? Yeah, it actually sounded a little too calm for it to be Travis Kelsey. <laughs> I, I, I thought that it sounded fine. Yeah, I, no, it I was thought great. it's in a podcast form. You're doing it with uh other athletes, your peers, guys you played against in your career. There is something to that. There is a time and place for it. We've seen it on TV shows. FX now has whatever you want to say, yeah. right? Like yep. there's 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 a difference though between being introduced as a head coach of the Lakers and having a podcast or talking with Rob Polinka or having a show on FX. That is not the time to do it. And I feel that the people that he was talking to are the same people that you aren't going to change their minds. And the fans that you may have gotten by dropping an F-bomb are going to leave you just as quickly as they jumped on board because you said the F-bomb. The first four-game losing streak or the first time that LeBron looks like he's frustrated with his head coach, bye-bye. They're not going to stick around. So you also have to know your consequences and who you're actually talking to. And at that point, you may have won a couple of fans, but those fans aren't going to be there for the long haul. And that's where he really misses the mark. I mean, I think it's different right now because neither of us is a Lakers fan, right? So I'm, nope. I'm looking at this as a guy who's not my coach, and maybe that's why I wasn't bothered by it at all. I'm thinking, I thought, would I be upset if, if Ty Lue did this, you know, when he was hired? And I truly don't think it would have bothered me. I think J.J. Redick is literally in a lose, 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 maybe win situation. So, like, who cares if he said this? Are we going to be talking about this if they start 5-0? and You know, like, he is. there's nothing he can do right Everybody is waiting for results. And if the results are good, then this isn't going to matter. If the results aren't good, it's going to be brought up again. But he, all we're doing is waiting to see what he's going to do. And an F-bomb dropped here in, in a, what you're saying, time and place, not the time and place. To me, it's like he he's it showed a little bit of, of passion and it showed that he cared. And I don't have a problem with that. He would show that. passion if he was like, we're going to win the bleep in Western Conference. He was talking to people haters and that is a very jj reddick thing yeah and as a coach i think you have to be able to process that i shouldn't say this if i am now the head coach of the Lakers. lakers or is this about me or is this about the lakers and being the lakers head coach and that's where he completely misses the ball and it and i think it wrung a bunch of people's ears the wrong way i think i i I, I'm curious. I don't want to sound like get off my lawn guy, <laughs> but we do have peers here at Fox Sports Radio. Iowa Sam, Ryan Bershinger, Isaac Lohenkron. I want to start with Isaac if he's available because he is a media veteran. Did it hit your ear wrong at all when you heard J.J. Reddick drop that F-bomb yesterday? Well, for, first of all, I am not your peer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm way down below. Come on. Thought God. I was going to say it the other way. Uh, good afternoon, by the way. Uh, yes, it did, because a lot of networks and radio stations were carrying that live. And I understand that that's part of the deal with modern athletes when doing these live interviews. They happen all the time post game, but time and place time and place. An introductory press conference is a different form and a venue than just after you won a hard-fought game and haven't had a chance to cool off. First impression. My first impression of you, Monty, was the actual interview. When you actually swore on the phone to me when I offered you the job, I had already spoken with you, so I felt I had a little bit of a basis with you. Sure, but he already got the job, so he he's good. Like, like that, that initial 
conversation that is what he had with Rob Palinka and Jeannie Buss. At this point, it's like, again, I think he's just in a situation where it's lose, 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 slightly win. Could he have not said it? Sure. But is it that big of a deal? No. Ryan Bershinger, I feel like you are not of my generation. Not to name ages here. How did you feel about yesterday? You know, when I first heard it, I didn't really think anything of it. But I think that that's that's kind of the interesting point, though, is the fact that it wasn't really surprising because I think we've grown accustomed to especially younger guys like this. I mean, we hear it a lot from players. Mm-hmm. We 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 and and I'm sure he's not the first coach to to talk this way in their in their press conference. But at the same time, like it wasn't something that surprised me. And then when I kind of unpack that a little more, it actually is surprising because you look at the fact that he did just come from the media world. And he would know that, like, everybody behind the camera tenses up the second that somebody does that. Sure. <laughs> because we're all, uh, us here, if, if if you guys happen to curse on air, both, like, it doesn't matter. Even even if we zone out for a second, uh, we are conditioned to, like, suddenly freak out and jump in our chairs to, to do something about it. So, uh, yeah, it, it, when you think about it more, you realize you weren't getting J.J. Redick, the ESPN NBA analyst. You were getting the podcast host. And maybe if you dive more into that and see, is that more than the angle that he's going to come at as a coach? I don't know if that's reading too much into it, but I did think it was interesting from that angle. And by the, by the way, on second thought, I just remembered that generationally, remember Roy Williams at Kansas, just after they lost the national championship, he cursed live in that uh, post game sure. interview uh, when he was asked about going to North Carolina. It is something that I think we're more accustomed to, but in this realm that we work in, you're right. If I hear somebody, even I tense up, right? Naturally. But if this was all that you took away from the press conference, that's my problem with that. You know, it's like he said so much more. He gave specifics as to how he wants to improve the Lakers and how they can actually win. And instead, we are discussing his F-bombs. And I just don't get that's it. That's why it was so important for him to not say it because it distracted from everything else that he said. Iowa Sam, I wanted him to get his last word because I think Iowa Sam agrees with me. Yeah, I, I conveniently I, now what? I know why we're doing this topic. I just want to ask everyone, just because I want to see, I just want to see. Yeah, the survey, survey. The survey. Guy who agrees with me. No, I, I, I didn't like. We it. already had the votes, Monty. Yeah, I know. Clearly, this happened before I got here. I think it was cringy and unprofessional. Um, cringy? Yeah, it was the f bomb. Well, it's because of the time and the place. I thought it was cringy and unprofessional. You're up there wearing a suit. It's an introductory press conference. Great point by Isaac. It's being carried live by other radio and TV outlets. Um, but I also understand your point, Monsi, where you're like, it, listen, he said a lot of things of substance, and we should also focus on that. But I think it was distracting to Dan's point. Um, I just like I looked at I saw Rob Palinka's face after he said the first. I think he said the f word effort twice but the first time he sort of looked a little uncomfortable for a moment and what rob palinka probably just forgot about it larry he didn't really care about it afterwards um profanities have been i feel like slowly infiltrating like movies and pop culture like especially like the harder words like you know the f word and stuff for like the last 45 50 years you're hearing it more and more and then like in comedies of today you hear it just so much that maybe it's like lost its power that's that's Um, that's such it's such an interesting line though because There are comedians who feel that using a curse word is a crutch. Right, that it, it is. is only done I, for effect. That you can't be funny with your mind and your words. But then it has no you effect have to after cross, too long. That, that you have to. Cross it should over. be used as a punctuation, not as a constant filler in sentences in between words. See, I, I actually agree that comedians who use it, it's like a cop out because you're trying to be funny. But I also think that there are times when there is no other word but an f bomb. To get across what you're trying to say, as somebody who loves to curse uh, away from the microphone. Listen, I curse, I curse a, a lot too. But when I'm at like the grocery store, and I'm in front of some like ten year old little boy, or I see some viral video of a ten year old boy like cursing out his mom and using all this vulgar, horrible language and profanities, I'm like, I feel bad. I'm like, man, they got failed along the way. And this, this is where this in this kind of situation, this this is where you don't curse in your introductory press conference. There needs to be a little bit of a line of of separation there. A ten year old vulgar cursing at that, his parent is not what J.J. Reddick But is. it's a symptom of that. It's where we make it too casual for cursing in a situation like that. And then it starts to trickle down to people who are younger and maybe don't understand what they're saying. That's my opinion. So J.J. Reddick has the responsibility to raise kids right. 
It's not that, he's not raising any children. It's when you're in a professional setting and in, in an introductory press conference where you're introducing yourself to millions of more people that knew you before. Maybe just it's just a bad look. I just think it's yeah, unprofessional. I, I, it's too I, casual. I, I think the fact that J.J. Redick, again, felt it was more important to be J.J. Redick than the Lakers head coach. In in that moment, he can he can f bomb to the cows come home, uh, you know, from today until whenever with his team, with the refs, however he wants to do it. But that setting in where you didn't like they didn't just lose a heartbreaking game by a three at the buzzer where you want to say those words, you want to scream like he did it for effect to a group of haters, air quotes that again really don't care if he said it or not. But what you did is you offended a lot of other people around and just kind of shed a little bit more light to maybe what your motivation may be. That's the problem I have with it. Time and place. He can do it whenever he wants. That wasn't the time and place. I honestly feel a lot of this really stems from how people already had a dislike towards him and his attitude and his cockiness, which he is. He is cocky. He comes off that way. And, you know, he went to Duke, so he's been cocky for a while. But I, I think that stems more from it. I'm really curious, like, if Steve Nash would have said this F-bomb when he was introduced as a Nets head coach. I don't know if it would have been this negative of a reaction. I feel like it has to do more because J.J. Redick, like, everybody's like, he's underqualified. He's just this guy who went to Duke and is friends with LeBron. And I think that's where this this really stems from, why everyone's having such a problem with it. And not everybody. There's a lot of people who really don't care either. It, it, but when I go on social media and I read the people who are mad, they're like, I, I've never liked that arrogant guy. So it's like, oh, okay. So you you just had feelings already about him, and this just propelled you to feel like that even more. Well, he played into it if that's you know, if that's the the persona. But when you're the Lakers head coach, they're bigger fish to fry than being the the hated villain from Duke <laughs> and the kid sure. that could shoot the lights out. And you also said, like, I want him to be the Lakers head coach, like the, the, I wanted him to personify that and not just to be himself or something like that. Is right, right? What you said? Well, so, so who cares if he's just himself? Like, isn't that what you want though? A little bit more of transparency, and he was transparent in everything he said. He has, he has, he has days and weeks to be able to to prove that that was just that was not the setting. That, it's not you don't go in there and be like, man, I can't wait to drop this f bomb and put him on their ears. And that's what I felt like he was waiting for that opportunity to do so. And I, I he don't used, think he could, have, he could have said, I don't give a bleep, and it would have had the same effect. Of, of that, except we wouldn't all be in a hubbub. We would have been like, all right, he doesn't care about the haters. But for some reason, he took this step to use the F word more than once and feels that it's no issue. Like, that's, that's, that, that's the whole issue. If people don't think that you're qualified to be the Lakers head coach. And day one is this test and you fail it with a big giant F, pun intended.